What's the word, y'all? So yeah, um, the Chicago Bulls are the last undefeated Eastern Conference team. It feels good, man. It feels good to, to be on the top of something. Now, I don't know how long we're going to stay at the top of the conference, but as of right now, I'm screenshotting this. I'm making it my lock screen. I'm, I'm taking this number one seed thing a little bit serious. So we're 4-0 oh right now. We're going to talk about the Bulls uh, because for the most part, today's slate of games, kind of kind of mid. You know what I'm saying? We got some blowouts here and there. I'm happy to see that the Celtics and the Hornets gave us a good game. Two of my favorite teams to watch. Jason Tatum with a 47-7. I think he's the fifth Celtics player of all time to do that. Jason uh, Jalen Brown coming off of his injury or ill or whatever he was dealing with giving us 30 and then yesterday it was ish smith and the and, and caleb found out it was caleb martin um uh, making the big time moments for the hornets and today it was jay jay den or jay lynn mcdaniels if his brothers and y'all not like stars or one of y'all not a star i kind of get y'all mixed up like i ain't gonna forget stephen curry and call him seth accidentally but if y'all like role players and lower end of the roster i might forget your name so my apologies but i'm pretty sure it's Jalen. he had some big time shots um miles bridges out of nowhere player of the week last week and he continues to take a lot of shots so it's cool that they gave us an overtime performance shout out to jb for the nasty poster and the other really good game was the bulls going against the Raptors. And yeah, I, I'm excited. I'm legitimately excited the fact that um the Bulls are 8-0 as this team. Now, I'm counting those four um, <laughs> preseason games, but the Chicago Bulls have not lost a game as long as this has been the version of their team. And majority of Bulls fans, 99.9% .9 of Bulls fans are on cloud nine, man. We haven't started off 4-0 since 96. I, I was born in 96. You know, Zach Levine just won four straight games in a row for the first time this entire career. You know, so it is exciting for us to be on top right now. Week two of the NBA season is here, which means I got to tell y'all about my presenting sponsor, Prize Picks Again. Hit that link in the description and use code Kenny, and they'll match up to $100 in deposits. Let's get into it. Now, let me show you some of my wins for this week because let's keep it a buck. Your boy has been on a hot streak. So this is the one from the other day. Just a three-pick power play. Carthy Towns rebounds, got that. Trey Young points, got that. And Giannis points, got that easy in the green but then we had this one early in the week as well um when the the lakers played against the grizzlies now this one i put flex B desmond bain and john moran came through on fantasy points russell westbrook was 0.1 away but because i did flex i still ended up in the money and i really like it because it's just you versus the number you see a number if you think it's too high you hit the under if you think it's too low you hit the over simple now again i mentioned we got a group chat where we're going against each other on prize picks and out of the eight people in the chat i am third place right now and today might be the day i can jump up to second so if you want to play alone hit that link in the description download the app and use code kenny because you're matching up to a hundred dollar deposit a lot of y'all a ton of y'all use code kenny in week number one and i appreciate you let's try to match that again in week number two before the season starts every single year, I read a lot of columns, whether it be Zach Lowe, whether it be some people at the Ringer, Kevin O'Connor, just some of the biggest um, names when it comes to NBA media, uh, writers, even podcasters, and pretty much everybody had the same sentiment about the Chicago Bulls. We believe they're going to be a top 10 offense because they had DeMar DeRozan, Lonzo Ball, Zach Levine, Vucevic, those are all positive offensive players, but we question the defense. We really, we think that they're going to be one of the worst defensive teams in the league, and so far, I think the Bulls players saw all of that and decided to dedicate themselves to the defensive side of the ball because right now it's been completely opposite. I'm pretty sure they're a top five defense so far through the first four games of the season, and the offense still has it come along completely and I think it will you gotta remember that Zach Levine has never really played with anybody that can do anything in his entire career at least as he's been like an emerging star I know he played with Cat when you know Cat was really good but as an emerging star he hasn't really had a really good supporting cast so he's still trying to get used to that DeMar's still trying to get used to when he can take over games and thank you DeMar for taking over today because things were getting really really scary um, Vucevic hasn't been great so far offensively this season so like the offense has not been there but the defense has Alex Caruso is coming off the bench and leading the league in steals <laughs> Alex Caruso had been in the Western Conference his entire career and it was a battle and now he comes to the Eastern Conference in his free cheese. He, he's doing what he want out there. So the defense has come around, which is which is good. It's positive. Now, Bulls fans, things are about to get a lot rougher because the next month of the season is, is hell, man. And what I can say, the Bulls have taken care of business. They have. Um, the Every single game this team has played or every team that this team has played, the Bulls, they, they beat a team 
that wasn't nearly as talented as them. So even starting in preseason, the Cavs were more talented than them. The Pelicans without Zion were more talented than them. Cavs and then again, this Grizzlies game was interesting. Um, the Grizzlies had pretty much everybody back, and the Grizzlies are a super talented team. But for the first four games of the season, we've beat teams that we 100% should have beaten. Now I'm not taking that as like a negative because you got to take care of business, especially right now because every single team looks at least solid. <laughs> so you want to get these easy wins in. But things are about to get tougher. We got a couple days stretch and we can just chill. And then we got the Knicks. We got the Jazz. We got the Celtics. The 76ers twice. The Nets. The Mavericks. The Warriors. The Clippers. The Lakers. The Blazers. The Nuggets. The Knicks again. The pay Like, this is about to be. Until November 22nd, these are all playoff caliber team. And I even account 22nd because it's not like the Pacers are a pushover. I mean, these are all teams that are playoff teams. So this is about to be the realest testament to what this team could possibly be. And I'm excited for it, man. I'm super excited for it. I think my boys can hang. Will they still be undefeated a month into the season? No shot. But I still think we're going to be, you know, really solid. And I cannot wait. Um, I'm, ju I'm just saying, if we end up going 500 here, <laughs> I'm still on cloud nine. Did, you, did I just read you those teams? You saw how good those teams are? If we go through this next month stretch as 500, I, th I think we're in a very good spot for the remainder of the season to be like a playoff team. But it has been fun, regardless if we're going against teams that we should be beating. And it has been extremely fun to just, like, I feel like this is the first team since, like, maybe, like, Derrick Rose era where I feel like they're like super likable players on the team. Like we haven't, ha we didn't have that in the guard packs era. And right now we got that enough bulls talk. Let's talk about this 2021 class because they have surprised the heck out of me just a week into the NBA season. Now I've always mentioned this on here before, but I know we got a ton of new subscribers, by the way. Thank you. If you're new around here, subscribe, leave a like. Um, I am not a college basketball guy. I am a guy that will come to my work room at five o'clock every day and watch as much NBA basketball as possible. But when it comes to college ball, it just doesn't grasp me the same way as the NBA ball. So because of that, I don't know a ton about NBA draft prospects. Typically a month before the NBA draft, I'll start doing research and I, I would like read articles from people that I trust in the, the scouting world. I'll listen to podcasts. I watch YouTube videos of other creators that I know watch a lot of ball. But even within, I, I'm not confident enough to tell you before draft, that's the steal. This is that. This is that. And that's why we do the draft stream every year. And I ask y'all, WL pick, y'all. And um, well, this draft class even surprised me more than I expected it to. And it's not even just the top end talent. So Jalen Green had his first really, really good game the other night where he dropped 30. He was unstoppable behind the arc. He even got to the basket and dunked on some people. He hasn't, if I'm not mistaken, he has not got to the free throw line yet in his NBA career. And, and I watched majority, I would say majority of this game where he dropped 30. There were times where he probably could have got some calls, but he's a rookie. The ref's not blowing a whistle. He has not got to the free throw line yet, but I'm still impressed with his ability to score the ball. Everybody knew he was going to be able to do that. The next guy, do I dare say he's been the most impressive to me? I'm going to say he's been the most impressive, especially considering his situation, and that is Evan Mobley. I watched Evan Mobley switch onto Trey Young two times in a game where they end up beating the Atlanta Hawks, by the way. And again, they, they beat the Denver Nuggets today, so the Cavaliers are, like, really riding. Uh, they traded Torian Prince for Ricky Rubio, and I don't think they even expected Ricky Rubio to turn into the prime version of himself, the version of Ricky Rubio that got drafted before Steph Curry. He's turning into that with the Cavs right now. He getting into fights with Composo and stuff. Anyway... Um, Evan Mobley, I watched him switch onto Trey Young and hold his own. I've seen him in the preseason. I saw him switch onto some of the Bulls guards and hold his own. And and I interviewed him before the NBA draft. Um, and, and when I'm doing an interview, I try to do as much research on a person as possible because, you know what I'm saying, I want to make a good, good impression, impression. And by that time, I had watched a lot of film, and I knew that the defensive impact was going to be there. I really questioned some of his offensive capabilities and some of those instincts and how they could translate to the NBA ball. Because we see a ton of NBA or, or college defenders be really good, but not be able to translate that into the NBA, especially not in their first couple games. I see defensive player of the year, like, like potential when I see Evan Mobley play ball. And the reason why it's even more impressive is because a lot of the lineups this man is playing with, he's got Jared Allen and Larry Marketing on the court with him. He's got Kevin Love and Larry Marketing on the court. He is always surrounded by other forward bigs. And he is still doing his thing on the defensive side of the ball. And, and even better, offensive, like, 
did, did not expect. I thought he was going to come in super, super raw, and he has not been. He's been able to take advantage of, like, the small defenders being on his back. He's been able to, to shoot. But what I'm more impressed with is his playmaking. JB Bickerstaff gets a ton of credit from me because he is he's basically letting Evan Mobley play. A lot of coaches out there don't really do that. Now, I know uh, JB Bickerstaff is a part of a team that's rebuilding, so part of the reason he is, like, getting he gets a contract is because we like hey we want you to help develop these younger players but he continues to let evan mobley be in these last um these last minute lineups and be on the court when it matters the most and that is that is crazy and, and very important for the development of some of these young players evan mobley ridiculous so the next guy fourth overall pick scotty barnes i remember being in our our draft stream and him jumping up to number four and i asked the chat what y'all think about it and y'all didn't fall for it again last year patrick williams did the exact same thing from the exact same school out of nowhere a couple weeks before the draft people were saying he's going up the draft board draft boards and they're both drafted at fourth overall last year they were like hey that's an l patrick williams don't deserve to be fourth and he turned out to be pretty solid at least a year and some change into it and so far scotty barnes is doing a similar thing and but i would say on an even higher level as a rookie um people saw him as an extremely raw player they gave a lot on the defensive side of the ball no mm -mm. the jump shot looks way more fluid than a lot of people expect it he's a guy that can get it off the glass and just run coast to coast with it there's a play in, in his biggest game of his career when they were going against the celtics in the td garden where he got it off the rim went coast to coast in like four seconds euro step layup and that caused the td garden fans to boot the celtics and that was a big time moment and even today he did not have a good game against my bulls but he was everywhere. Defensively, him, OG Ananobi, Fred Van Vliet, Pascal Siakam. I don't care who that fit is. It could be Precious. It could be Chris Bush. I don't care. That team, maybe not this year. Next year? Year after? Who's scoring on them, bro? Legit. Legit. Who's scoring them? I want to look at their defensive numbers. Now, they won't add today's game because uh, it just ended. But they are clamping up as a defense right now. And right now, they're seventh in defensive rating which is really good. The only problem is they don't have a lot of shot creators other than Fred Van Vliet and I guess scoring Drogic a little bit. Um, so they might not win a ton of games this year. But again, as these players continue to grow, I don't think there's that much of a ceiling for Scotty Barnes. I legit think his potential is through the roof. Let's go straight to Josh Giddy. I remember talking to some of my Australian friends who watched him overseas, and they, they basically gave me the scouting report of, we believe that he's going to be really good in the NBA, but it might take him a year or two to get used to the tempo and the speed of the NBA. And he hasn't really showed that, man. He had his best game against the 76 the other night, and he showed his ability to be able to score the ball. But the thing that I was super impressed with is his pick and roll play. Oh, man, he was kind of a master out there, and you know, relative to him being a rookie and stuff, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> He's not out there looking like, uh, I don't know, James Harden on the pick and roll or Trey Young, but you know, he was really good for a rookie against a solid defensive team, and I think his statistics would have been better than, I think it was like 17, 7, and 8, which is really good. I think it would have been better if he had like competent shooters around him, because a lot of the times he would get past his defender on a pick and roll, but since we don't trust Darius Baisley, now Tobias Harris is helping over, and you know, Baisley's gonna miss his shot, or he might not even get the look i believe that josh giddy is gonna be uh, really solid in that respect i remember him getting drafted and thunders fans was like hey josh giddy's a point guard i was like is he really and turns out yeah he's a, he he can be a primary ball handler and listen thunder fans y'all are super lucky by the way because um i was i was this close two games into the season to say it's a wrap for me watching him and I mean, like, live time. Like, I would be okay with catching highlights of Shea because he's one of my favorite players in the league or highlights in general. But as far as watching live games of them, I had almost cut it off in game number two. But Josh Getty reeled me back in, man. I'll be watching y'all more. Now, we have a guy like Franz Wagner who I haven't been able to deep dive into, so that's going to come in the future. But it looks like he's playing pretty solidly, too. I'm going to transition to the very next pick, which is Davion Mitchell. I am a person that is able to admit when they were wrong. And I'm going to say face to face or face to camera that I was wrong about Davion Mitchell slash the Kings. Now, Davion is legitimately the homie. I never doubted him as a player. I doubted his pick with the Sacramento Kings. And I was wrong. Actually, put put up the put up, editor, put up the picture of me and Davion. Now, now put up the, the DMs of me and Davion. Like, that's legitimately my boy. But I saw the Kings with, with De'Aaron Fox, Tyrese Halliburton, Buddy Heald already 
um, at the guard positions, and I didn't think he'd be able to, not that he wouldn't crack the rotation, but he wouldn't be able to be as impactful as we think he could be because he's playing behind some of these dudes, and I was completely wrong there. The first couple games of his career, he played against Dame, he played against Steph, he played against, like, CJ McCollum, and, and he did what he had to do. He, he defended them really well. Like, some of those guys are, like, the greatest scorers of their position, so <laughs> he's not going to completely stop those dudes, but he slowed down the, the offense of some of these dudes, and we knew he can do that, but in the last game, just the Warriors he had his best offensive game too and I think that was his first game where his family was in too so they just he just need mom pops and whoever else was there to show up every game and he gonna mess around and win rookie of the year the defense was something that we all knew was going to translate the man's nickname is off night for a reason because when he is guarding you you're probably going to have an off night but I'm happy that Luke Walton has found a way for him to be impactful even though some of these games they lost he hasn't really been able to be on the floor so his defensive impact hasn't really been shown in the crunch time. And actually, the last two games that they lost, it was a lot of Luke Walton bad coaching. Still fire, we still fire Luke Walton gang around here, best believe it. And the very last one, um, the one that has surprised me the most as far as like a name that I didn't even really know until a couple days before the draft, Chris Dorte. Um, and I was calling him Chris Diorte like two days ago, but I learned it. I I've watched the Pacers a few more times and it's Chris Dorte. Um, wow. Um, and, and it's, it's very rare. Actually, I went back throughout Rick Harlisle's history as a coach, every single team that he coached and tried to figure out how often does he allow a, a rookie player to come in and not just shoot as many times he does, but get the amount of minutes that Chris Dorte has so far in his career. And the answer is one player and that's Luka Doncic. He had a young Danny Granger, rookie Danny Granger. Danny Granger didn't crack the rotation in year number two. Chris Dorte came into his NBA career and was firing. Like, no hesitation. And I believe that that shows the, the, the confidence of Chris Dorte in himself, but the confidence that Rick Harlow has in Chris Dorte to allow him to take the shots that he was taking when you already have Malcolm Brogdon. Now, things might be a little bit different if Karras wasn't injured or TJ Warren wasn't injured, but they found a diamond in the rough. Rick Carlisle, don't be letting rookies do this. Now, he is a 36-year-old rookie or something like that, but he is still a rookie player. And it's cool to see players that may not have been able to, to super blossom in college because the college game is so much different than the NBA game. But my boy Pierre always says when he's watching college prospects, he's not looking at what they're doing in college. He's looking for players, uh, things that translate to the NBA game. And I guess Chris Dorte had a million things that translate to the NBA game because he is fearless as a scorer and you love to see that but shout out to Chris Dorte man these are the type of picks that you want to have in the late lottery slash right outside the lottery it don't happen often I actually the 13th overall pick then produced a lot the 13th overall pick be producing a ton a ton of great players you can go do your, your history about it but it's crazy and those are the players that just jump off the page for me uh there are other rookies in this class that have impressed but maybe just not to that level uh we still haven't seen Cade Cunningham or Jonathan Kaminga in an NBA game just yet and I'm excited to see them eventually come back but yeah man 2021 draft class killing it